Hello church, how are you today? I hope this devotion finds you well. I was thinking about the whole journey of seeking the Lord and my mind ran back the other day on a moment from my childhood that really helped to bring that all to life. I used to love those trips with my parents to visit my grandparents. They had just a great little house filled with all kinds of antiques and curios that never failed to fascinate an inquisitive little boy. But the yard outside was equally as enticing, with sloping trails and all manner of fruit trees just waiting to be explored. This time it was mango season and the trees were heavy with mangoes. Whilst many of them were out of my reach, there was a smaller tree nearer to the house that I could climb with a clutch of sweet mangoes with that blush of ripeness on the skin. I started up the branches with my eyes fixed on the mangoes. I got close enough to reach them and reached out. Then I felt the ripple of a series of needle-sharp pains across my forearm and tumbled out of the tree in shock. In my quest for sweet reward, I had failed to see a nest of jack spanner in the branches, which was the local name for a certain species of aggressive brown and yellow wasp that packs a sting that you tend to remember. So my adventures for that day came to quite an abrupt and painful end. So firstly, thinking about this some more, fruit is the outcome of a relationship with Christ. And Christ is our fruit. He is our exceedingly great reward. In Psalm chapter 16, verses 5 to 6, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen from me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. And secondly, there is a lot to be aware of on the way to the Lord. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 19 to 23, Christ explained the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but only endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the world, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So there are clearly perils on the way to the fruit. There is a danger of us not understanding God's word. We hear it and it doesn't make sense to us and then it's taken away, making no change. There's a danger of us having a very superficial relationship with God's word. We feel good about it for a while, but then when it causes us problems, we go away. Then there's a danger of letting the cares of this world and material possessions crowd out the word from our hearts. But the excellent news is that some of us receive the seed on good ground and bear fruit. 
This is why the word of God's kingdom to come and his promises need to be taken everywhere by all of us in whatever ways we can. You never know who is listening and where that good ground may be. So what makes us seek him in the first place? Jesus gives a really clear answer to that in John chapter 6 verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So a decision to give your life to Christ and follow him is not really an intellectual decision that we just rationalize for ourselves or something that we just wake up one morning and decide to do. It's a revelation to us from God the Father. This principle of an active Father God revealing the truth of Jesus is shown perfectly in Matthew chapter 16 Verses 13 to 17. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. He is the hope that we have, our great high priest who intercedes with us who intercedes for us with our Heavenly Father and is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Indeed, when our eyes are opened to the truth of what he's done, purchasing our salvation with a living sacrifice, laying down his body to be broken so that we who believe him can be saved to eternal life It is the most mind-blowing realization that anyone will ever have. He paid the full price because we cannot pay it. So is that it then? Is it time for feet to go up? Does the Bible stop there? No, it doesn't. We're told that there's some things about this journey that we need to understand and be aware of. We are likely to face hatred. In John chapter 15, verses 18 to 19, Christ teaches, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Consider the reactions you get when you make any kind of public stand for God or for what is right. Consider that a college at Oxford University, with its rich Christian heritage, has recently issued an apology for causing offence. And what was the great offence? That they had hosted a Christian conference. We will face temptations. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, we are told, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. We will face trials. In Acts, this is played out in the extreme where Paul is stoned at Lystra, dragged out of the city and left for dead. But he rose up 
and in chapter 14, verse 22, set about strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. Street preachers in this country are now facing situations where they find themselves harassed, handcuffed, and locked up by the police for speaking the word of God. No, 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 no. Don't, don't take my Bible away. Don't take my Bible away. Don't take my Bible away. Gave you the simple option. Don't take my Bible away. And though we may not be stoned or arrested, when hard times, physical or emotional pain, sorrow or injustice come into our lives, we can find ourselves confused and questioning why these things are happening. And why is this situation just persisting for so long? When is it going to end? I just can't bear it anymore. So you know what? We're up in the branches, climbing. The fruit is before us, perfect and sweet. But we're getting stung. Boy, are we getting stung. But we're still climbing. We can still climb because of the promises of Jesus Christ. He is our peace. And he tells us in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Believing in Jesus does not mean that we're not going to go through trouble. But what it means is that we're not going to go through trouble by ourselves. We need to place our hope in him because he has already won over all evil and over death itself. He tells us in John 16 verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Things happen for a reason, even when the reason is not clear. Testing of faith produces steadfastness, so let us remain steadfast, keeping our faith in the one who has overcome the world. This life is but a vapour that appears for a short time, but the sweetness of life with him is going to last forever. So let us keep on climbing. God bless you.